Hello, everyone, and welcome to our talk, Galaxy Australia, the Influx State of a National E-Research Service. I'm Gareth Price, Service Manager of Galaxy Australia, and I'm very excited to be able to present to the GCC once again, and this time with my co-host, Simon Gladman. Hi, everyone. I'm Simon Gladman, and I'm the Lead Engineer of Galaxy Australia, and Gareth and I will be presenting this talk together. Okay, I'd like to set the scene for you. Galaxy Australia has been in operation since 2018. It grew from pockets of regional funding to be funded, supported, and really championed as the national service for mature life science analytics. And this was achieved through a number of mechanisms that I want to talk about. A close lurking relationship with Galaxy Project, membership with the users galaxy.star ecosystem and quite frankly all our close global friends in the galaxy community and also locally a lot of hard work by the team to make the service something researchers could trust in and in particular could recommend to their colleagues and students to come and use now thanks to planning funding and successes we have secured a nationally funded and ongoing host for galaxy australia at the Australian Academic and Research Network, otherwise known as RNET. This talk is going to go through some of the reasons why and the planning that's taken us along to this decision. So what do we know about our users? Well, the first and most obvious thing is the number of users is growing and the number of jobs is growing. But graphs like this don't really tell the whole story. What we know that was important to our users, well, service uptime. Seems obvious, but when you get tickets in, anytime you go down asking why you're down, you know just in fact how important the service is to your users. We know our users increasingly want to be able to run larger and more complex jobs and have the capacity to run more jobs concurrently. We know our users are asking for a greater range of tools and workflows tailored for their research. And the talk after this by Johan is going to show you how we are engaging with our local research communities in Australia. So please do stay on for that. We know our users want more references. And uh, thanks to Galaxy Australia's policy of hosting data, our users want easy mechanisms to get data in and out. And Nguyen, part of our Galaxy Australia team, uh, has a lightning talk coming up on Galaxy Cloud Store integration, linking national resources to secure data transfers between our services. To find that on uh, thesketch.com, please just search for Galaxy Cloud Store. What was important to us was the operators of a national Galaxy service. Well, many times it was the same thing that was important to our users, that's uptime. And in our case, with minimal constant intervention failover landing pages and failover responses if and when the service does go down. Clear and reproducible actions so the team knows how to respond on a daily basis. And again, aligning with our users because they're the ones that we work for, the capacity to give them a greater job size and the capacity to allow them to run more jobs go concurrently. And really, quite frankly, what we want is a lot less bus factor and a lot less sleepless nights. So we did ask ourselves, when was enough enough? And that was when we acknowledged our historical design slash baggage in our operation of Galaxy Australia, our current infrastructure at the time, which was excellent, but its infrastructure and our goals just no longer aligned in enabling a national service that our staff growth meant that no one really understood implicitly how Galaxy was built and operated anymore and that we needed to address that. And that our original setup had uh, evolved over time with gaffer tape and rubber bands. And that was enough's enough. What we needed at first was maybe an intelligent design. We thought better about that. What we needed to do was evolve Galaxy Australia. So, Simon's gonna take over from this point and describe some of that journey. And I'll be back at the end with a couple of slides. Before I hand over to Simon, I just do wanna point out 
that uh, unlike the graphic on the bottom right there, our team does tend to wear more clothes than that as they operate Galaxy Australia. Thank you. Thanks, Gareth. And then in September and October of 2020, Galaxy Australia had a series of significant outages. Most of these were um, caused by the massive extra demand that would have undergone in the previous six months. But um, some of it was also caused by the fact that we were running on oversubscribed cloud nodes. Um, and uh, we had some very noisy neighbors on those cloud nodes. And we also had a few backend storage issues that were concerning us. And then through some negotiation between the Australian Biocommons and the Pawsey Supercomputing Center, we were given an opportunity to move our service to a non oversubscribed cloud. And so we decided to take that opportunity up. And then we also thought this would be a really good opportunity to re-architect our system, to move away from our gaffer taped together um, evolved Galaxy service into one that we think would better handle a larger demand and also to stand the test of time. And so the way we did this was we decided to systematically look at the architecture of what a Galaxy service would look like um, and then we wanted to redesign ours with all of this information in mind. And we wanted to make this entire system completely reproducible. We wanted to use best practices like um, Terraform and Ansible and GitHub. And we really wanted to use all of the Galaxy community Ansible roles for as much of our system as possible. And the reason we wanted to do this was so that if we had staff changes, staff, new staff could come into our project. They could um, do the Galaxy administrator training which uses all the Galaxy community roles, and then they'd be able to transition onto our production system very, very easily. And we also took this opportunity to all completely automate all of our tool installation, all of our tool updating, and all of our tool testing. And Catherine Bromhead has a really nice poster on this in Thursday's poster session. And so we did all of this work and we completed the entire move of Galaxy Australia from Brisbane to Perth in six weeks. But how did we actually go about doing this? Well, the first thing we did was we spoke to all the other Galaxy admins we could, we could find. We talked to um, usegalaxy.org admins in um, Nate and Martin, et cetera, and their teams, and, and talked to them about how they operated their Galaxy server. And then we talked to Galaxy Europe. We spoke to Bjorn and Jim Morrow and Helena and asked them about how they built their system and, and some of the, the issues they were having with it. And, just thought about how other people's experiences could relate to ours. And then what we did was we decided to build a diagram of what a Galaxy service actually looks like from a functional point of view. We wanted to separate out the virtual machines that we had all these things running on, but just look at actually what the Galaxy, what, what a large Galaxy service actually looks like from a functional point of view. So we had our Galaxy application, our queue controllers, um, Pulsar nodes, our CVMFS references, um, our email service, database and backups of the database, the storage controllers, and how it all linked together and how it all fit. And then we sat down and we, we looked at um, what happens to all of these different components when they're under load and how do they affect one another. And through this, we managed to find out what our bottlenecks were. And most of our bottlenecks were concerned with our storage controllers and the fact that we had everything was trying to contact the storage controller at the same time. And so the loads were spiking. And especially when this is on oversubscribed cloud nodes, we had a problem. And so we took all of this information and we redesigned our architecture. So the first thing we did was we split all of our NFS servers up into different machines so that we could have one for um, tools and references, one for user data, and one for job working directories. And then, basically built everything up. Every virtual machine in our new service is completely put together using Terraform, Ansible, and is everything is automated using Jenkins. All of our Ansible scripts are stored in a GitHub repository at usegalaxy-au slash infrastructure, if anyone's interested in looking at it. And all of the changes that we make are uh, made via pull requests to our Ansible playbooks in our GitHub repository. We don't let anybody change the live machines anymore because that's just the path of not remembering what happened. 
And then we had to think about what to do with all of our user data. We had about 120 to 150 terabytes of user data sitting in our, our, our old location. And we wanted to know, did we have to move it all? It would take a long time to move all the way across the country. And so after a bit of investigation, we came up with the fact that we probably really only need to move the last two weeks of user data and our data libraries. And why is that? Well, we did some analysis and it looks like at about 99% their histories are worked on for about two weeks and then they're rarely accessed after that. But we've also found that data libraries are used quite regularly and so we probably should move all the data associated with those. But we also kept an ongoing NFS connection back to our old user data for everything else so that users could still log on and see all their old data. But all of their new data and all of their most recent data would be local to our new Galaxy service in Perth. And so we moved our Galaxy service from Brisbane to Perth last year in December, we got it all up and running and it was worked really, really well. And then as Gareth alluded to earlier, our system in Melbourne hosted by Arnet is nearly ready to go. And when, as soon as it is, we will be moving our service from Perth over to Melbourne using exactly the same process that we used to move from Brisbane to Perth. And we hope that things will go just as smooth. And we plan on making this move immediately after this conference, so very soon. Over the last six months and in the coming six months, we also um, will be making some large improvements to our Pulsar network. We've been given access to some significant compute resource in terms of remote compute. And so we've turned them into Pulsar nodes that we've added into our, our network. We've got a new one in Canberra. Um, we also have large um, high memory machines in, located in Melbourne and in Brisbane that we're adding into our Pulsar network. So this will help us support bigger jobs, more jobs, and hopefully help future-proof our service a bit. One of the really important lessons that we've experienced over the last 12 months is what do we do when systems become unavailable for long periods of time? We really need to meet our users' expectations of availability. But what do we do when we have significant hardware failures, when we building services fail, like their power or the cooling system fails, and it's going to be out for a long period of time, or even if it's just a long planned outage somewhere, what do we do? So we've thought about this and we've decided we're going to build a disaster recovery site. And we're going to make one of our Pulsar sites dual purpose. Normally it'll be a Pulsar node. And then when we press the big red panic button, it will turn itself into our backup Galaxy server, which we can switch to. And we're going to, um, accomplish this by um, some replications of the database and the recent user data, etc. And we'll have a semi-automatic failover. If you're interested in this subject, then please go and have a look at Nick's poster, which will be on Thursday. And so hopefully by the end of this year, our Galaxy service will look something like this. We'll have our head node located in Melbourne, hosted by Arnet, with um, uh, our main worker nodes and our main storage. And we'll also have some Pulsar nodes in Melbourne, um, another Pulsar node over in Perth, our backup site in Queensland, as well as um, some high memory Pulsars. And now I'd like to hand back to Gareth. He'll talk a little bit about connections to some national storage and then to wrap up. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. And it's over to me to uh, wrap up our presentation with one final topic. And that is the connections that Galaxy Australia is making to other Australian research infrastructure. So we do know that data movement has become increasingly more complex as our users become more ambitious in their analytical demands. They're bringing more data to the service, they're generating more results, and they want to bring that in easily and export it easily. To that end, Australia has a nationally funded research network in Arnet which provides one terabyte of data storage per person, per researcher in their cloud offering cloud store. So we, being Galaxy Australia, wanted to tap into this and so we did. We built, uh, thanks to the hard work of Nguyen, two tools for Galaxy, an import from cloud store and a send data from cloud store to cloud store option. These move data securely uh, through authentication with password management 
And there's a talk here at GCC this year, one of the lightning talks uh, that Nguyen's put together, Galaxy Cloud Store Integration, Linking National Resources. So I do encourage you to chase that down if you wanna hear just a little bit more about our service. And with that, it remains for me to uh, thank the Galaxy Australia team that's made our service so successful. Uh, so outside of Simon and myself, that is Igor, Nick, Catherine, Ewan, Michael, and Anna. And beyond the core Galaxy team, uh, we have so many thanks to have. There is the Australian Biocommons with specific mentions there on this screen. There's the greatest staff at QCIF and Melbourne Bioinformatics, uh, funding and resources provided by AIDC, PAUSI, Arnet, Galaxy Project, and Bioplatforms Australia and funding from the Queensland government. So thanks to all those partners for making Galaxy Australia the success story it is. And with that, uh, I'll close and we welcome any questions.